It was Louisville's center of jazz, food, heart and soul. Two blocks from 4th Street, a vibrant and unique neighborhood, home to African Americans, open to everyone. How did it all disappear in four years? Long before East Market Street became New Lou and the neighborhood with a must-see personality. And just two blocks away from what is now 4th Street Live, Louisville had an entire street that was electric and in the middle of the city. What happened to Walnut Street? It was the heart of Louisville's African-American community that opened its arms to everyone in segregated times. There was no woe on Louisville's amazing Walnut Street in the 1950s and early 60s. It was the heart of the Mecca of the, of the black community. You begin to feel an up-tempo feeling once you hit Walnut Street. That tempo meant the top blues and jazz singers in America at the time. Now the blues will make you Helen Humes, a star born in Louisville, sang after high school on Walnut Street for Louisville's first black band. That, that, that was my heart. And the most famous blues star in the 50s, the queen of the blues, Detroit's Dinah Washington, came often to Walnut Street's Lyric and Grand Theaters. There was always exciting buzz uh, on Fridays. I mean, that's when people got paid, uh, people were spending money, people went out for the first time that week for dinner. Uh, they, they engaged with their friends over a cocktail. It was Louisville's Bourbon Street. The block had a personality. It was alive and warm. It could be hypnotic and yet become robust and boisterous. The action began at 6th Street in Walnut, what is now Muhammad Ali Boulevard. As soon as you hit that and turn west, you know, it was like Eureka. You know, it was like my yellow brick road. Stretching from 6th Street to the west, Walnut Street was row after row of banks, restaurants, nightclubs, apartments, homes, and people. Anyone who came to Louisville, I can believe you that if they were black, touched Walnut Street because it was the heart. Historian Ken Clay says in a time of segregation, when African Americans weren't even allowed to try on clothing at the stores two blocks over on 4th, Walnut Street was supported by whites. Global was very unique in that it had a very strong relationship between the black power brokers of Louisville and the white power brokers of Louisville. It was a, a, a very exciting time and there were a large number of whites in Louisville who embraced uh, Walnut Street and supported uh, black commerce with their money, uh, with their presence. Getting the gold medal, it was real thrilling. Cassius Clay, then Muhammad Ali, would parade after his victories here. Little did Ali know at the time this would later become his street. MLK marched on Walnut often, and one man grew up on it. This was my street, and I owned every crack and every weed in those concrete sidewalks. Right here is Lucky Mars's pawn shop. <laughs> Take a look at this photo. Louisville sculptor Ed Hamilton grew up in the red brick building on the left of your screen. The family's apartment was on the upper floor overlooking Walnut. That picture is looking east, back to 4th Street from what is now 7th and Ali. The treasured picture now covers the entire wall at the Louisville Central Community Center. Sam Watkins zeroed in on what it captures. I see all the cars parked there. Uh -huh. It's probably sick because people work, you know, during the day. Uh, so that's, that's probably Saturday. You can talk about all the cars on both sides. So we went back to the same spot where this photo was taken to replicate the very same shot. It's a stunning view of what's been lost. What's lost is a seven block stretch that generations in Louisville today would not even recognize as their own city. Bernadette Hamilton says the demolition altered a way of life. A lot of business that could have been passed on to kids a lot of uh, after-school jobs. You're talking about three and 4,000 people easily would be doing commerce and engaging in activity at any given time, especially on Fridays uh, between the hours of 4 to 10 o'clock. A very, very exciting, stimulating uh, place to be at that time. How did Louisville create a lost city within a city? How did seven blocks in the heart of downtown disappear in four years? The answer is next. Louisville's Walnut Street, now Muhammad Ali Boulevard, is a shell of a once vibrant neighborhood. Out of nearly 150 buildings and homes, one remains. By the late 1960s, the destruction was easy, quick, and unchallenged. 
Urban Renewal, the 1950s and 60s federal program designed to save cities by tearing out blocks of old buildings, hit Walnut Street hard. In a short four-year period, the seven blocks, more than 100 buildings, from 6th to 13th, were leveled. Pictures from both the Filson Historical Society and UofL photo archives show the demolition as it happened. Buildings like this one, gone. Over here, another one, gone, gone, and gone. The only the remaining building. The only remaining building on this part of town Walnut right now. Street. Walnut Street. That's right. Nothing else, it, nothing else survived. The Mammoth Life Insurance Building at 6 and Walnut housed the barber shop owned by Ed Hamilton's dad. You can see the shop in the front of the building. Mammoth Life is that only building from Walnut Street's heyday still standing. It is now River City Bank, covered with a facade. So your dad's shop was right here? Right in this area, right in this area. Yeah, yeah in that space. Hello, Dad, are you in there? It's just like the old days. Just like the old days. River City showed us how Mammoth Life is still there. In the last part of the early 60s, this is the last time I've seen this. Oh, that's been torn down. Behind the facade, upstairs, are the offices where insurance policies and bank loans were given to African-American customers. Mammoth was the largest African-American-owned business in Kentucky. Hearing people, all the machinery, the typing, and people talking. And Inside, you flash back to the late 60s. The paint is peeling. And in the window, the original curtains are still there from the day the place cleared out. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I remember that one. In the basement, we found the printing presses that celebrated Mammoth's 1965 Service Club Banquet honoring employees. 25th year Service Club of the Mammoth Life. And architects' plans of the projects the company funded. Looks really old here. How did the Mammoth Building survive the wrecking ball? Mammoth Life uh, sold insurance policies throughout the, the region and southern states. Uh, it was connected to a major investor in Atlanta. And so you had that kind of economic power there. And so they, uh, they skipped that business on that side, on the, uh, on the north side, they tore down all the other business. Urban renewal was devastating to more than just buildings. When the neighborhoods go and the money goes and the people go, then your business suffers. Urban renewal came through and it just destroyed the whole area meaning relationships were lost. It just comes back to me, you know. I, I look over and I say, oh, there's so-and-so. Oh, there's so-and-so over there. Louisville's African-American community was vibrant. The only African-American library in Louisville at the time still stands at 10th and Chestnut. And from that barber shop, one little boy learned about the world around him from the waiters who worked at the old house restaurant across from the Cathedral of the Assumption. They'd come down here, get the hair cut, get the shoes shined, you know. I'd, I'd be listening to all those old cats talking the talk. Urban renewal was an acknowledged disaster for Walnut Street. It just ripped out the heart. With nothing left but empty lots in November of 1978, by a 6 to 5 vote, the city's aldermen voted to rename Walnut Street Muhammad Ali Boulevard. WHAS covered what happened next. 12 of the 70 brand new signs were stolen. I hate to leave you now. Three years later, Louisville's Helen Humes died. Wish that I could stay somehow so long. By that time, she'd become an international blues star. So big, the New York Times assigned a reporter to write her obituary. In it, she says of Louisville, I was never a person to stay away from home too long. And the legacy of that street, as big as the hits, belted out by the woman born right around the corner. Bringing together people around the civil rights movement. Everybody there knew everybody. We think Louisville is uh, much better off because it had a wanted street. So long, so long. Well, desegregation also helped speed up the view that Walnut Street needed to go. African Americans were shopping and moving elsewhere in Louisville. But East Market Street sat empty with most of its original buildings until Gil Holland turned it into Nulu by 2008. One can only imagine that if the old Walnut Street district had been saved, maybe it would have been the first to come back alive.